That is an arrow stuck into a cinder block. Today we're going to talk about uh, pound in your boats, kinetic energy. Uh, in a world where Cam Haynes, Josh Bomar, and Joe Rogan are shooting 90 pounds, uh, we're all wondering, you know, is it necessary? What does that extra pound that you actually do for you? So, um, I shoot 70, Steve shoots 60, the monster in the corner shoots 80. So, we're going to shoot these three different poundages. You know, we're going to shoot it in some, some common targets and things like that, measure distance in. We're going we're gonna to calculate uh, a few different things. On a computer, it's fairly easy to do. When you talk about kinetic energy, which is one of the things guys use to determine, you know, how much kinetic energy you need to take each channel. Kinetic energy equals um, mass times velocity squared divided by 450,800. So easy math calculation, and since Greg is so good at math, this is going to be his job for later. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, one of the most important things when, when we're doing what we're doing is we're going to have to get the speed of the arrow. We're going to have to get the weight of the arrow. And then we're going to look at our three different bows and their hunting setups. So, yes, we could do it in a lab and see exactly what one arrow that's the exact same weight does in three different bows. But that's not the case here. Everything we do is relative to hunting. Um, three of us hunt together, um, you know, and determining how much poundage relative to, again, kinetic energy, and uh, hoping to come up with an answer of, do you need to go up in weight? Um, as you get older, you tend to go down in weight. But again, looking at everybody online, everyone's really trying to, oh, I want to shoot more poundage, I want to do this, I want to do that. Um, we're hoping to come up with some of those answers for you today, guys. We're in the butcher shop here, and we're going to get the poundage of each of the bows. So we're starting out with Steve's bow, and he shoots about 60. So I'm going to draw down on the bow here, and they're going to read off the poundage, and then um, we'll write that down, and we'll, uh, we'll, get you, we'll get you the speed afterward. 60.8. Yeah. 60.8. All right, first bow, 60.8. All right, bow number two. The first bow was a Hoyt RX-9. Second bow, Hoyt RX-9. Here we go. 70.4. All right. 60.8, 70.4. Here comes the uh, Mac Daddy. All right, this is a Hoyt RX-7, uh, which essentially um, a bow two years before the nine. If I'm not careful, this thing's going to launch me back up in the air. Well, if you're heavy enough to pull it down. <laughs> what do we got? Same. 80. 80. 80 on the nose. 80 on the nose, yeah. All right. So we got 80 on the nose. So All right. We're going to go take those numbers. We're going to put them into the calculations. And we're going to get speeds on each one of these bows with the arrows that we shoot for hunting. Guys, we're about to speed test our bows. And uh, ironically, we're all shooting an FMJ. So I'm shooting a 340, and Greg over here is shooting a 300 FMJ off five millimeter. And Stevie Ray Vaughan, what do you got? FMJ. See, 340s. Steve's cheap. He's letting us use the practice arrows. We're going to get his good arrows later. Okay, so Steve's probably looking at a 29 and a half inch uh, FMJ 340. So since we're all shooting five millimeter arrows, it's going to be real cool to be able to compare, you know, depth penetration into some of these targets because we're all talking about the same diameter. Yeah. Didn't plan this out, guys. So we got three RX series bows, an RX7, two RX9s. We got a, a, a bunch of FMJs. Even though we didn't plan this together, it's not by accident. We're all hunters. And I, I gotta say, you know, if you ask me what the best setup would be uh, for deer hunting is, a, is an FMJ arrow for, for penetration, you know, and just overall killability of, uh, of an arrow. Yeah. We should make Greg pink because he's bigger than us. Um, we're using Nocturnal, guys, so you can kind of see what's, what's happening here. So when we're looking at the targets, guys, Greg's gonna be pink for the day, I'm gonna be red for the day, Steve's gonna be green for the day. So you'll be able to determine which bow is doing what. All right. 
We got a 60 pound bow. Shooting through a chronograph. 250.6. 250.6. All right, do that two more times, Steve. Half a second. 250. 250. All right, so he's got dead 250 on this. All right, guys, I'm up I next. I don't know if that's set to your height. Wow. 250 on the nose. 250. 249.6. Yeah, bow number, bow number three. Use your. Use your pink knock. 280.5. 280.5. That's a pink knock? That's the one you gave me. Hmm. It's kind of reddish, doesn't it? We may change into blue. I was trying to get him to pink to so lower his manhood a little bit, but <laughs> he actually like testosterone that pink knock into red. <laughs> Two eighty. Wow. Now, I did see a deer that Greg shot this year, and as I'm cleaning it, the hole was in the top, and there was a giant hole on the bottom. And I, I think I actually mentioned it might have been a shotgun. But looking at his setup, his arrow, and all this, uh, now I understand why it looked like that. All right, let's go weigh our arrows. Let's talk a little bit more about that and uh, continue sure. and get to the fun stuff. Yeah. All right, let's weigh Steve's arrow. 520.5 grains. This is my FMJ at 70 pound bow. 484 on the money. 484. What's 50 cent got? 546.6. So we got our calculations right now. The 60, 60 pound bow at shooting 520 grain arrow. The 70 pound bow is shooting 484. And the 80 pound bow is shooting for 546. We're all shooting FMJs, we're all shooting points with similar cams and uh, same diameter arrows. So this is really a, a cool test. All right. Hey, what's happening, guys? Edwin here. I'm the guy behind the scenes who helps Sean edit the videos. I'm going to take over for two minutes and walk you through this section of the video. So in the last part of this video that we just watched, John and the guys determined the speed and weight of their arrows. And now we have the data that we need to determine just how powerful each bow is. So in this section, I'm going to show you how to use a simple online calculator so that you can quickly calculate the kinetic energy of your bow. Remember that this calculation is going to enable you to gauge just how powerful your bow is and what animals are in your range to harvest. So let's start by going to the calculator website. Here's a URL. So to determine the kinetic energy and momentum of your bow, you simply have to apply your arrow weight and arrow speed. Let's use Steve, who has a 60 pound bow for this example. So Steve had an arrow weight of 520.5 grains. The calculator is going to round it up and an arrow speed of 250. As we can see here, after applying the arrow weight and speed, the calculator has determined that Steve's 60 pound bow has a kinetic energy reading of 72.23 foot pounds and a momentum of 0.578. Now let's take a look at the kinetic energy recommendations for bow hunting. When looking at the recommendation amounts, we can clearly determine that Steve's kinetic energy reading of 72.23 foot pounds is in range for each class of animal from small game to big game. Okay guys, so this process and calculation that we just went over is going to allow you to know if the current hunting setup that you have is in range for the type of animals that you are bow hunting and looking to harvest. Alright, I hope this information was clear for you and I'm now going to hand things back over to John. Alright, take it easy guys. Thanks. As our first test, what we're going to do is this is a brand new target. So we're going to shoot each of our setups into this brand new, like uh, it's a Delta McKenzie target. So we'll do this test, see how deep the arrow goes in and we're going to measure it and we'll be able to talk about our kinetic energy and what it did in a brand new target. Again, there could be some foam air pockets in there, so it might change it a little bit, but we have a bunch of other stuff we're going to shoot. This is the first test. All right. So Steve's going to take a shot now. Just try to put it in one of those corners and we're going to measure how deep the arrow goes in with his kinetic energy of about 72. Is that good? 
That yeah, one will work. Nice, That'll work. <laughs> nice and thuddish. All right. It's really hard not to aim for somebody else's, you know, Luminoc. <laughs> Without hitting it. Without hitting it. It's impossible. I'm going to shoot it. Gargantua, get up there. All right. We switched me over to blue. All right. We switched him over to blue because, uh, again, the amount of testosterone in his body actually changed the pink knock to red. the 80 pound ball if you couldn't tell all right let's grab the tape measure all right here we go okay this is steve's arrow steve's arrow on the middle of the target seven and three eighths seven and uh, yeah seven and three eighths yeah. seven and three eighths to the tip john's arrow seven and seven eighths seven and seven eighths so the same thing actually happened twice okay nine and five eighths nine and five eighths Um, so Steve's asking me about my new truck tires and um, how they'd stand up to an arrow. So since he somehow got higher, more kinetic energy than me, I'm going to sacrifice one of my tires to show that my arrow will go in deeper than his. Um, He's Greg, to off his new truck. Greg doesn't count on this one because he's shooting a freaking catapult. All right, we're shooting field tips. Sure. Nice. Oh. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Greg. Just don't hit the metal, man. Yeah. That's all I thought about as I was shooting it. I'm like, so do you often think about rubber when you're talking about penetration? <laughs> no. No. Not anymore. Why do you like want this shit on my arrow? He's just trying to crush his arrow. It's just glowing. All right. Right. And we got a leaking tire. But mine's slightly deeper than Steve's. And uh, Greg's is just smashing us all with 90 pounds of, of kinetic energy. All right, for test number three. The idea is a lot of people shoot in their house. They shoot in their basement. They shoot in their garage. And... Um, what happens when you miss? So if you have a 60 pound bow, a 70 pound bow, or an 80 pound bow, you miss, you're gonna cause some damage. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna miss and we're gonna shoot a wall. So uh, these guys constructed a house wall. So we have sheetrock, we have insulation, and we have plywood. And we're gonna shoot at it and we're gonna mimic what happens when Steve misses in his basement and he hits his wall. So is he gonna need to repair the outside of his house or is, uh, is it gonna stop? So let's get up here guys and let's see what happens. Steve, you're up. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what happened on that. <laughs> yeah. I think there's an arrow sticking out the other side of a wall. Yeah. So this is like, there's very few people in the world that have this kind of kinetic energy. I think it went right through. Yeah, it went right through. It's in the grass. Well, I risked the GoPro on that one. If you didn't see it. So we're using the GoPro here. His arrow's a little sideways and his knock is a little clouded. He went right through the target. And so 70 and 80 pound bows got stopped. 70, 60 and 70 pound bows got stopped, I'm sorry. 80 pound bow did not get stopped. It blew right through the plywood, the sheetrock, and the insulation. So you can kind of see the damage it does. So don't miss in your basement, guys. Um, at least don't miss if you have an 80 pound bow. 
if you have those other bows, likely you're going to be able to keep your keep your arrows in your house. All right. Let's get on to the next test. I, I think this one this one proved itself. Like the idiots, I'm gonna say we are, but really I am. We just shot the cinema block without turning the camera on. So, um, you guys really don't have to do it again if you don't want to. I have one more practice one if you want. You want to do it? I don't care. All right, well, let's all do it then. Then we're all doing it. See. Three, two, one, five, Greg? Uh, yeah, we're going to try Yeah, what that. happened? Did that I one... went a little early. I went on two and a half. <laughs> Premature that. All right. I guess it really doesn't matter where we shoot it because it's not going to... All right. Draw. Three, two, one. So we actually filmed that one. Somebody's arrow is sticking in it, Greg. No, that's not mine. We hit right next to each other. All right, let's go check this out. We shot a block, and I think Greg was trying to shoot everybody's arrows all day, and I think he actually did it. Check this out. Who won the, who won the day? Who won the day? Thank you very much. Yeah. My arrow just stuck into a cinder block. I'm not about to tell anybody that. that the kinetic energy of this arrow is better than anything else. But that's got to be the coolest damn yep. picture I've ever that's seen. Stuff. So I'm going to tilt you forward. That is an arrow stuck into a cinder block. Here's the wrap up. An arrow sticking into a cinder block. And that was a 70 pound bow. Yep. I can't honestly tell you that there's Oops. anything different between when you're shooting in a cinder block. I think it just hit a soft spot. So, so those there's arrows the, this is the back like a hollow point. Yep. If you look at, if you look at the arrows here. So that's what happens when you hit something really friggin' hard and it doesn't go through it. All right, guys, we're finishing up our test here. Yeah, we screwed around, but the, uh, the objective is um, we got a guy shooting a 60 pound bow, a guy shooting a 70 pound bow, and a guy shooting an 80 pound bow. And uh, we'll put up the statistics right now again on what the kinetic energy was and the momentum. And uh, even on st when Steve changed his arrow, you're able to see a slight difference. Um, but overall, I think the, the 80 pound bow kind of showed a little bit more oomph than some of the other stuff. But when it comes down to it, I still think my setup was the best. <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, uh, Anyway. It would have been his that stuck in. Yeah. Right, it would have been mine that stuck in. I planned that all out. Um, nah, that was cool. Yeah, I think absolutely. any one of these bows, based on the numbers, will, will kill pretty much everything in North America. Yeah. Um, again, that whole like, back and subscribe thing, I, it makes me so goddamn uncomfortable even saying it, so whatever. So I'll say it, like and subscribe. Listen to Steve. Um, all right, thanks again. Hope we got something out of this, and uh, we, we had a blast doing it. Have a good day. Like and subscribe.